Welcome, everyone in the listening audience, to Kabbalah for Heretics. It's me, your host, Yaakov Leib HaKohen. And as I say every morning, we are doing, as we've been doing now for over 20 years, studying the Zohar volume by volume, section by section, page by page, and sentence by sentence. Over 20, almost 25 years. Every morning, weekday morning, at this time, we even have one or two people who have been with us that whole time, who have been listening that whole time. And so uh, doing that, we've completed volumes one, three, as I've said before each of these programs, and now we're into volume four. It says, once, as Rabbi Eliezer and Rabbi Abba were sitting together, the former said, I observe that my father will not listen to any man reading the prayers on New Year and the Day of Atonement unless he has watched that man three days previously to purify him. Now listen. Just listen. This is a profound, hidden, an absolutely counterintuitive point that the Zohar is making about the saint, about the Yechid Mashiach. My father, in this case, is Shimon Bar Yochai, the great, great saint of the Zohar. By tradition, the man who set it down by a revelation from God while in a cave, hiding. Now, Shimon Bar Yochai, in this case, is an example of the high priest being spoken of right before this, who blesses, that is to say, the Messiah, who does the work of heaven on earth. So what it's saying, when you put all that together and you look at it in context, is that the messianic figure, in this case, Shimon Bar Yochai, in another case, Yeshua Bar Miriam, in another case, Shabtai Tzvi, and so forth, can not only can bless, but purify. Not only can he bless an individual, a person, but can purify them. Think of that. That person has the ability to absolve a person from sin. Not after they die, but right there at the moment. Rabbi Nachman of Breslov says the same thing. He says, while still alive, of course, referring to what was true of him, he believed while he was alive. He said, after I die... If you recite these ten prayers, I will move heaven and earth to save you. I will reach down and grab you by your sideburns and pull you up out of hell. It's, that is absolutely not the common belief in Judaism. If you ask a rabbi, can a great tzaddik or any man absolve another man of their sins? They'll say, absolutely not. That's crazy. If you say, doesn't it say that in the Zohar, that they can, he'll tell you, no, it doesn't say that. But it does. This is why I, I'm so critical of other teachers of the Zohar. Because what they teach is really... Uh, a, a kind of uh, hopped up Judaism and that is not what the Zohar is about rarely rarely if ever is anything ever mentioned about Judaism the last time it was mentioned rarely was uh, standing on the beam of the altar reading from the Torah which is traditional that's hardly though a reference to the religious aspects of anything 
The Zohar is not about the Jewish religion. And it is not about the Torah as we understand it from the written Torah. And certainly not the way the rabbis understand it. Because the Zohar says, until the Messiah comes, the great majority of the rabbis are from the Sitra Akra, from the left-hand side of God. And they purposely do not want to understand or communicate the true meaning of the Torah. A saint, a living saint, can absolve another individual of their sins. Listen again. Once, as Rabbi Eliezer and Rabbi Abba were sitting together, the former said, I observed that my father will not listen to any man reading the prayers on New Year and Day of Atonement unless he has watched him three days previously to purify him. For Rabbi Shimon used to say, through the prayer of the man whom I have purified, the world receives atonement. Whom I have purified. Rabbi Shimon says this in the Zohar. Isn't that amazing? Well, to any, any born Jew, it's amazing. And it should be amazing to any of you who know anything about how Jews look upon sin and the absolution of sin. There's no such thing as confession in Judaism. But as a matter of fact, this passage, in a sense, validates the conception of confession in Roman Catholicism. The priest is given the authority of the high priest to absolve the confessor of their sin. Of course, you all know that I, um, as a follower of Shabbat Shalom, I converted formally, literally, and practiced Roman Catholicism, along with Islam and Hinduism and so forth. But I have to tell you that the that the rite of confession is very powerful. There is a feeling from it that one comes away with that is not false. If one is, of course, with the proper confessor, that is to say, a confessor who truly has the blessing of the high priest upon him so that he represents a surrogate. That priest represents a surrogate for the high priest. Remember, it's still a priest to whom you're confessing and who is absolving you. And he is doing that by the power of the high priest in whose place he as a priest is standing. Now, this also means that confession to just another ordinary person is not the same thing. And, of course, the New Age wants to make it such. Oh, well, this means that, you, that anybody can absolve you of your sin. No, it doesn't mean that. It does not mean that. It means that a person standing in the place as a surrogate for the high priest, the Messiah, by the baptism of the Messiah, the Holy Spirit, can, in fact, absolve you of your sin. Think about the importance of that. In everyday life, for us, <clears throat> for Rabbi Shimon used to say, through the prayer of the man whom I have purified, the world receives atonement. Look at this. The high priest purifies the priest, and the priest purifies the reader. So that the reader can atone for the masses. Listen to that. That's the transmission. That's the transmission that we always talk about. A teacher is worthless unless 
He is part of the living transmission. Literally, unless he has sat face to face, person to person with a great master who is also in the tradition with his own great master, etc., unless he is in that transmission, that teacher is worthless. Now, the New Age doesn't want to believe that. Because until that time, all he's teaching is his ego. He is not in the transmission of the Holy Spirit. The same is true with Jung, with whom this kind of thing starts. Jung was powerfully endowed with the Holy Spirit. He passed that on to his personal closest students, such as my teacher, whom I always mention, and from whom I learned everything. He passed that on to him, and he then passed that on to me, just as Jung had passed it on to him. Jung passed it on to James Kirsch. James Kirsch, being a real disciple, passed it on to me exactly in the way that it had been passed on to him, so that, in effect, I was brought into the Holy Spirit by Jung. That's true of everyone in, in the transmission. It's not true of everyone, period. I was not the only one to whom that was done. We're dying out and being replaced in the Jungian transmission by a bunch of New Age crap. But there were others, not just me, not just James. Here we see that. We see that kind of spiritual transmission being spoken of. On this day, well, pardon me, Rabbi Shimon used to say, through the prayer of the man whom I have purified, the world receives atonement. I have received atonement by the great high priest who passes that atonement on to me. I pass that atonement on to the river. And he then passes it on to the congregation. That's the transmission of the Holy Spirit and the redemptive power of the Holy Spirit. And it's still operating today. I received the Holy Spirit by teachers who received the Holy Spirit by teachers who received the Holy Spirit from etc. All the way back down the line. And that's true also in my studies of Hinduism. I achieved samadhi through my master, personally up front, day in and out with him who received it from his master, who received it directly from Ramakrishna. That's the transmission. And that's what's being spoken of here. He was still more particular not to accept the shofar being blown by any man who was not well acquainted with the rules of the shofar and their inner significance. I don't have a shofar handy right now next to me, but I've blown it many times for many of you that you've heard it. It's that ram's horn that is blown to call the Messiah on the high holy days. It's blown every day in Israel, but uh, uh, outside Israel, it's blown only on the high holy days. And uh, the man, and it's only a man, who blows it is called the Baal Hatikia. And he must be familiar with the inner, hidden significance of what he is doing and what those sounds represent. If he's just blowing the shofar and making the sounds ritually, they don't mean diddle squat. And that's the way it is in most temples and most synagogues. The shofar is being blown because that's what you do. And it's being done according to the way it's done. 
not with a total consciousness at the moment of doing it, of the hidden significance of what is happening with those sounds. Always the emphasis is on the inner focus, the focus on the inner awakened, activated Holy Spirit. In a sense, the Holy Spirit is in each of us, but in one of three or four stages. Asleep, awakened, and active. The Holy Spirit can be there, but it's dormant. It has not been awakened by one in whom it has been awakened. Then it is awakened by one in whom it has been awakened. But it isn't active. It's just awakened that person. It's not, it's not bringing about redemption, salvation, and the unification of God. But then it goes to the next stage where it does. The Holy Spirit begins to actually do its work. Three stages. Every one of you listening here is in one of those three stages. Doubtfully the third stage. But most certainly the first. The Holy Spirit is, is in you. It is not awakened yet in you. That is what we are trying to do right now in this broadcast. I'm not sharing information with you. God forbid. I am to the extent I am empowered to do it, God please. Attempting to bring inspiration to you. Not information. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Open Holy Spirit. Come Holy Spirit. Come. 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 Come Holy Spirit. Come Holy Spirit. Amen for Amen. And you say, is that man saying that he has the Holy Spirit awakened in him? Yes, that's what I'm saying. I'm 82 years old. I've spent over half my adult life working hard to achieve that with my great masters, not on my own. And because of them, and because God has granted it, I believe the Holy Spirit is awakened in me. And speaks out of me, not by me. I am not the Holy Spirit. Why me? Because that's, of course, what the hostile person asks. Well, who the hell are you that it should do that? And my answer is, I don't know why. And I don't think it matters. I would be the last one I would choose for such an awakening. I'm an asshole just like every one of you listening to me now. I bit part and scratch my ass after I'm finished teaching the Holy Zohar by the authority of the Holy Spirit. I'm just like all of you. I'm stupid. I'm dull. I waste my time. I cheat. I lie. I'm vain and ignorant just like all of you. But despite that, for God knows what reason, in 82 years the Holy Spirit has chosen to awaken itself in me. Mostly, I think, because from the earliest I can remember, even as a child in my crib, I wanted it. As big a sinner as I am, as arrogant, Hostile, ignorant as I am. It has, in fact, come to me. It began coming to me when I was an infant in my crib. I remember the actual experience night after night, and I've shared it many times. Oh, you're just bragging. Well, maybe I am. Maybe I am. Of course, there's a little of the bragging in that, but I'm also explaining. And I'm also... Presenting my credentials. Your rabbi does. You go into your rabbi's office and there is, there is a diploma on his wall. Right? I have no physical diploma. I have the anointing of the Holy Spirit through my masters, who in turn have been anointed by the Holy Spirit by their masters, by the very, very transmission that is here in being spoken of, 
Listen again. Rabbi Shimon used to say, through the prayer of the man whom I have purified, the world receives atonement. And by whom has Shimon been purified? By the Holy Spirit. And so he purifies, he is purified by the Holy Spirit. He then purifies a man who purifies the congregation by reading of the prayers, the transmission. The reader of the prayers does not atone for the congregation simply because he wakes up one morning and says, I have that power. Even if he believes it while he's reading the, 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 the prayers out loud. It's only if indeed he has been anointed, not just in dreams. That anointing can come in dreams, but that's insufficient. It must be an anointing by a living master who has been anointed by another living master. You can believe me or not, but that is at the age of 82 where I sit. Baruch Hashem, thank God. Unmerited grace. It is for me merited grace. Please God, everything being communicated here, morning after morning, through these broadcasts is a proof of that. Not my words, Lord, but thy words. Let them hear not my words, but thy words. Not by me, O Lord, but by thee, by thou. It is not I who say these words, but the Father living in me. Amen. Now to end the class, not the class, the program, to end the broadcast, I will do as I vowed to do every morning upon the death of my dear friend and fellow Kohen, Leonard Cohen. I'll recite the mourner's Kaddish uh, in his honor. Yiskadal v'yiskadal shmei rabo bo'omo divro chidu sey v'yam nechmach v'sey v'chai echon v'yam echon v'chai v'chol b'yis Yisrael b'agalo v'yizman k'ori v'imro amen Aleinu v'elko Yisrael v'imru Amen. Everyone, please say Amen in the audience. Go now in peace. The broadcast is concluded. End the broadcast recording there, if you would. Any question, Yeshai, or comment, or you have maybe have gone to bed, and that's fine. But yet, if you do, all right, go ahead. Take your time, ask a, a question, or, or make your comment, whichever. Oh, here we go. Here we go. Okay. Very powerful, shaking and stirring by the Holy Spirit with tears and uncontrollable rocking. The saint cannot only bless but purify through the transmission. Not by their ego. Oh, you got it, man. That's beautiful. New Age ego worshippers proclaim, but blast dead air through the bones of their whim. Wow, you do feel good this morning, don't you? <laughs> beautiful. Beautiful, you shy. Oh, thank you. It's a privilege to, to do it with you, really, for me. All right, my man, my boy, my son. Have a great, great day.